The creative person has a special gift. His private vision of the world. Through words, ideas, images, he touches our view of the 20th century. Ladipo is the founder, director, playwright, composer, and the principal actor of the Duro Ladipo Traveling Theater Company of Oshobo, Nigeria. I was born of a Christian family. My father was a reverend pastor. And I could just directly say that I was born in the church, you see, because my father was touring around villages, teaching the gospel. And uh, my parents had a lot of trouble in having children. About 13 children were born dead before I was born. That's the reason why I was named Duro. Duro means stay, don't go again. And uh, since I was born, I had it that uh, none of my brothers and sisters uh, ever die again. We are all living now, about seven of us, and my father is uh, having on, uh, only one wife, and that's my mother. In fact, I was very interested in uh, uh, music since I was seven years old because I was one of the boys directing the choir for my father in the churches. There I was uh, allowed to use my own sense in bringing the choir, I mean the choir up. Then I felt of changing from the uh, uh, monotonous tune of the harmonium and the piano and with this western music Everything just sounding the same every day, every week when we come to church. I said that there should be drums here so that everybody will just be happy when we are worshipping. In fact, it was quite strange to the uh, uh, pastor in charge of the church. He didn't like it, but I just introduced it abruptly one, one Sunday, putting drums into the songs, and there was a shock. To everybody, from where is this? I Companies, uh, most especially theater companies, are not so many in Nigeria. We can say we have about three to four theater companies. We can term to be professionals. I started my theater with in, on a salary basis. I was one of those who started this in Nigeria because I felt people should be tied down to a certain profession. We do everything together, and when we go on tour, I feed them. And at the month end, I share our profit. <laughs> Uh, 
fulfilling appointments in the theater by traveling around to play is not easy. The first is the problem of transport. It's not easy to, to buy a mommy wagon to put the theater. We can't trek from one place to another. Many a times, we were stranded in the bush when the lorry gives trouble. We have to sleep in the bush. And when we get to a town, first thing we do is to look for the theater where we are going to play. Many a times, there is no stage. We have to make one stage ourselves. We hired empty drums of oil, empty kerosene tins, hire planks, nail them together, get an improvised stage as quickly as we can. And at the same time, we think of lighting problem. We have to use hurricane lantern at times, or gas lamp. At times we improvise means by which we can get uh, effects on the stage without electricity. But in many of the towns there is electricity. We must try as much as possible, get things set, ever before we get started with uh, the performances. <laughs> On the day of performance, it is our uh, uh, custom to go around and the lorry with drums and amplifier, loudspeaker, announcing the name of the theater and the type of play we want to put on, and demonstration, dances, songs, to pull out the crowd. When they hear drums and different type of uh, uh, enticement, they come out and then we tell them, tonight at 8 o'clock at So 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 Hall, Duro Ladipo National Theatre is putting on this type of play. Obakoso, Obawaja, Obamoro, different types. So they've been praised. That makes us happy and confident that we shall expect a good crowd. The music comes first. The type of, uh, of uh, melody I, wa I want to put in my opera, I mean the timing, whether quick or soft or fast or slow or jumpy or any type, that is the first thing I think about. The second thing is how to put words to suit exact the exact type of, uh, of melody I will want to put in. So then I write the lines and at times go through each, change the, the melody to my own taste and at times stop the melody and put lines, only words. When I find it will be boring to my audience because I believe in a play that can catch the audience. I am very particular about talent. I can't just take anybody anyhow, anywhere into, into, the, into the theater company without first uh, watching for his talent, you see. And at times, I, all, I casually meet people on the street. A talented person, maybe is taking part in a dance in the street or is singing, I will just invite such a person to my theater and to find out whether he or she is interested to join my theater. And uh, we try them on drums and on many things. And psychologically, I am able to see somebody who will be good for me. And that is how I take them in.
1963, Duro Ladipo received the Nigerian Federal Government Cultural Achievement Award for his play, Obokoso. In 1964, the Duro Ladipo Company performed with outstanding success at the International Arts Festival in Berlin. In 1965, the company toured Great Britain and the European continent. <laughs> After the performance, we eat at large and we make ourselves happy with good palm wine and some drinks. Many at times food sellers forget to prepare food for us if even we pay them in advance. So we have to carry our stoves and our cooking materials and then we make ourselves happy. We dance to tunes of record players. In Yoruba country, culturally we are not made to have only one wife. We have wives according to how we are able to feed them. In theater, I have found that uh, I have been missing some important stars in my company and I decided to start to marry those that are very useful to me. Presently, I have three wives. My first wife is by name Mabel. She takes care of the children at home while the other two wives go along with me on tour. My second wife, who is the greatest star I have, is Abiodu. She plays the leading role every time because she has a wonderful voice. She's just talented with voice. She sings wonderfully and she is a very serious actress. The third one is Bisi Idowu. She's very talented. She's the, one of the best dancers I have. She can dance very well. She, want, she was one of the foundation members of the theater as, as Abiodun was. And so uh, the two are keenly interested in theater. And I, I hope uh, two of them will survive, will just be sufficient for me presently because I can't feed them more than two at present in the theater. I have to think for, for some years again before I can get another very talented actress to make three wives I want to keep in the theater. Duro Ladapo lives in Oshobo, one of the principal towns in the western region of Nigeria. Although Nigeria is today governed as a constitutional democracy, traditional rulers and kings, with such titles as Oba, Timi, or Alafin, continue to exert considerable influence among the population of their respective communities. Duro Ladipo is perhaps the first to have used folk opera as a medium for historical tragedies. Occasionally he performs these plays in the presence of traditional chiefs and rulers. In the ancient city of Oyo, 
the Alafi is the supreme head. And being the supreme head is the supreme commander whose order must not be changed. Is regarded as a semi-god. We still have kings, we have courts, we still have the dancing, the singing, the poetry, the way of dressing, the way of respect to the kings, all these join together to form a very rich Yoruba culture. After the advent of the Europeans and with the new constitution and all the rest of it, instead of uh, uh, prostrating with the drums, we have our young ones shaking hands with their elders, copying directly from the modern life. I, as a playwright, felt when I wanted to start my work on playwriting like a reviving most of the respectable aspect of the Yoruba culture. I collect many of my facts from others, kings of ancient towns where, for example, in Oyo, where we've taken the story, I collected facts from uh, the Timi of Ede, the Oni of Ife, the Alake of Abeokuta, the Olawa of Owo, the Osemo Owe of Ondo, people of importance who are able to get me the story, I mean the correct history of the town. In particular, Oyo is the kingdom of, the, the seat of the kingdom of Yoruba country. And uh, the king there is such a very great person that nobody can just come near him anyhow. <laughs> Yesterday's performance in Oyo is a new era in the life of a theater in Nigeria when history of a town is put on the stage in the presence of the personalities portrayed in the play exactly on the spot of happening. All the characters in the Obakusu play were fully represented yesterday in the palace of the Alafi of Oyo. So we had the Timmy of Ede who featured in the play. <laughs> we had the Alafi of Oyo who featured in the play. We had the Oyo Mrs. We had the Banka, another warrior who featured in the play. All the characters in the Obakoso play were fully represented yesterday in the palace of the Alafi of Oyo, where this story happened years, years gone by. When the Europeans came, many of our traditions were were stopped because it was believed that people worshipping Shango, Oya, Obatala, and all these Orishas in Yoruba country are non-heathen, I mean, are non-Christians, and they are termed to be pagans. But I have read a lot of Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Very interesting book. I believe in the strength and the greatness of the word of God. Still yet, I felt like going back again to see why these people who were worshipping Orishas did it. Then I had the feeling of going into the lives of great people who had died long before the arrival of Christianity. I chose Obakoso, Shango, 
a king who was because of his greatness and the type of death he died that people started to worship him and they are still worshiping him till today Jesus Christ came to the world to save sinners and he was killed and uh, I feel Shangotu was adorned by his people that's why he was made a God be worshipped we worship Jesus Christ we believe that he's the son of God and he has come to save sinners but uh, Shango, the belief of our, of our great ancestors about this man was that uh, he lived a very wonderful life and he died because he didn't want his town's people to spoil the tradition of his own ancestors and thereby decided to abdicate voluntarily from Oyo town before he committed suicide. But the people who still believe in his power say the king does not hang. King Shango felt himself very miserable and lonesome. All his wives deserted him. Then he left the town. On his way going with his only wife, very faithful wife, Oya, arranging to go with him to his mother's town, Oya decided, Shango, I could no more go with you. Then on, on seeing this, Shango felt he could no more live. He had to commit suicide. And the nearest way he could get a death was by hanging. Then he hung himself on the neck. <laughs> This news spread quickly to the town and some old friends of Shango felt it was a shame to find their king being reported to have hung himself. And they wanted to cover this secret, but it could no more be covered. And the people proclaimed, the king does not hang. The king does not hang. Anybody who says our king has hung himself, his house will be burnt and there will be thunder coming from heaven to destroy such a person. And it has become an adage in the Yoruba country that the king does not hang. And there we get the title of this play, Oba Koso, which means the king does not hang. <laughs> Yam will stay fresh for 20 years. Don't throw it away. The yam flower will keep for 30 months. Don't throw it away. For Shango is coming back to eat the food. <laughs>
In the city of Oyo today, many people still respect King Shangu and they term him to be the existing Alafi. Any Alafi that reigns must pay the greatest homage to this king and it remains till today. But I don't want this thing to die. It cannot die. Educational Television Network.